all of the very best third-party Android launchers offer something unique, be that customization or even a minimal aesthetic. With that in mind, here are some of the best to install on your Android phone in 2023 and beyond. Thanks for watching 95 Google here on YouTube. Remember to thumbs up, hit subscribe, and then tap the bell icon to be among the first to watch our upcoming videos. First up is one that we've actually been wary of outright recommending so far, and that's Hyperion Launcher, simply due to the number of bugs that we've seen and that many people seem to suffer with, especially when you read the app reviews. However, we do think it still deserves a look. Regular updates to Hyperion have squashed some of the major problems, but there are some lingering little issues here and there that might make it tough to stick with for longer periods for some of you. We'd actually liken this to a budget Nova launcher, which I don't think is a negative as at under five megabytes, it's lightweight and it's super fast and fluid when it's in operation. It seems to play nicely with system gestures and you can add the Google Discover feed with a downloadable plugin, just like many other apps out there. There's a neat feature of app locking with biometrics available if you want that added layer of security. And that's something we think is sorely missing on most stock Android launchers out there. Like many on our list that you're gonna see in just a moment, you'll get plenty of options when using the free version of Hyperion, but a $2 in-app purchase unlocks yet more, including app draw layouts and including a lot of other customization features that you would take for granted. We definitely think it's one to look out for, even if it does have a few lingering little problems that you may experience. One of the best Android launchers that we haven't yet featured before on the channel is Smart Launcher 6, and it feels like a combination of the default color OS and Samsung One UI launchers, but with more functions thrown in for good measure. And I do think that is definitely a positive. Areas like the app drawer have been clearly redesigned with one-handed usage in mind, shifting all your applications downward, which is definitely a useful option to have available as phones balloon in size. The wallpaper selection tool here is even linked to Unsplash so that you can use copyright free images to use as your background on a day-to-day -day basis if you want to as well. The icon customization feels like it's just been lifted right out of a OnePlus or Oppo device with the ability to tweak and tune the default look and feel of all of your app icons and it works really well in practice. You can also adjust the icon grid properties probably to a greater extent than many we've seen here to do things like increase or decrease padding between these uh, with giving you the ability to fit more widgets and even apps on screen at any time. Some of the inbuilt smart witches widgets are pretty incredible with icon groups and even a remixed version of the at a glance widget found on pixel phones. Smart Launcher uses the Microsoft Start page in place of the Google Discover feed on the leftmost screen, which I think is a unique twist and has improved immensely in recent years. It also allows you to choose relevant content tags or subject areas to show in this specific section. The Pro tier though is pretty pricey at $4.29 per month, but a lifetime plan starts at around $20 and sometimes does go on sale. So no list of the best Android launchers would be complete without Nova, and it's here yet again. The most popular third-party home screen replacement for Android has evolved and changed over the years, but the experience remains pretty exceptional. Last year's Nova 7 rewrite has been one of the most substantial upgrades to this classic app in the 10 plus years than it has been available. Nova 7, of course, is faster, lighter, and even includes more features to fully customize your daily experience on your Android phone. Nova 7 is also a powerful app for you to download and use on your smartphone or even tablet as a result of that. The startup theming options go way beyond most stock launchers on Android, plus you have the ability to adjust all manner of UI portions to your heart's content. Areas such as the folder pop-outs, home screen, grid layouts, icon fonts and size are just the start of numerous other customization options and you're even able to disable all animations or add options to app pop-up menus for even quick access to important controls when you need them. The added search functionality also goes above and beyond the inbuilt on-device search for many Android phones out there too. So unlike Nova, Launcher 2 closely mimics the Pixel Launcher experience and offers a clean, googly look and feel for just about every Android phone. It's not technically the most impressive launcher even after multiple updates, but even though it looks identical at first glance, it provides just enough customization over the Pixel Launcher that is definitely worth a visit for most of you out there. The project has recently been taken over after some interesting behavior of the original developer, but that does not stop this from being a must have for many people out there. Launcher 2 takes the Pixel Launcher form and just runs with it. Firstly, the ability to set custom icon packs itself 
is definitely worth a look if you're frustrated at the admittedly basic themed icons found in Android 12 and Android 13 on the Pixel launcher on Pixel phones. You can also go much further by adjusting app accent, color, tweak and create your own shapes and then more to boot, returning some of the Android 10 features that we really did new and love. The at a glance widget still favors the pre Android 12 design, which is somewhat disappointing, especially if you're used to the new version, but you can adjust how it looks with time, date, and even prompts and notifications from apps that Google doesn't offer on their default pixel widget. The Google discover feed can be added here too, but you will need to sideload the lawn feed APK to get this working correctly. It's very easy and it rounds out a great alternative, even for pixel owners out there wanting an Android launcher that isn't bogged down or bloated and has virtually the same smooth performance, albeit with a few extra custom controls thrown in. A lot of launchers on Android follow a familiar layout and despite some differences in how things are implemented, they all pretty much effectively run the same or provide a similar end product, which is customization. And the Agro launcher though is a completely different beast as it forgoes the traditional homepage layout in favor of a fusion of an app drawer and a home screen that does mean that it's a very acquired taste. Niagara relies on a small pool of favorites, which are apps that you need to pre-select. And these appear at the top of a usually alphabetical scrollable list of everything installed upon your device. A small section above this allows you to enable widgets that will show upcoming events, give quick weather and battery stats, plus more on top of that. While it is minimal, it feels very functional in its execution without being distracting. Notifications can be shown on your home screen, which saves time as it means you don't actually need to expand the quick settings panel to view these, especially on an app by app basis. An alphabetical sidebar lets you quickly scroll to any of the apps out of view so they aren't too far out of reach. Swipe actions open up the ability to access quick shortcuts and even view individual app notifications. Folders are handled a little bit differently here as Niagara lets you create pop out folders that contain some of your favorite applications. They live in the list rather than floating around on your home screen and fit with that Niagara aesthetic out of the box. Because of the layout and default format, I don't think Niagara will be for, uh, the perfect taste for everybody out there, but it's a unique launcher for Android owners to try out with them set for themselves with added pro features, including a weather and agenda widget, plus custom fonts and more for $5.99 per year. Designed to be a central hub for all of your accounts and apps, the Microsoft Launcher is a really good option to use if you use Windows 10 and 11 every day. There's definitely features like OneDrive and other Microsoft services that are heavily integrated and you won't find that elsewhere. It certainly doesn't look the best, nor does it offer quite the same level of customization as many of the other launchers that we've mentioned. However, you can adjust much of your home screen and even get a daily wallpaper courtesy of Bing. As I mentioned, that's one of my favorite features as you can just quickly tap this toggle to change your wallpaper almost instantly. And this is a really good option as they seem to play really nicely with dynamic color theming on Pixel phones running Android 12 and higher too. The expanded swipe up dock is great if you want a minimal home screen as you can add up to 10 applications here with only five being visible at any one time. Microsoft has also baked in the Your Feed panel that mimics the OnePlus shelf to an extent. This Google Discover Feed replacement is far more useful if you already use Microsoft services and Windows features on a day-to-day -day basis. It contains synced calendars, to-do lists, sticky notes, plus screen time, and even recent activities data. While Microsoft Launcher is not perfect for all Android users, especially those who use Mac OS as their main PC and laptop option, it might be ideal if you're heavily invested in Windows and want an extension of your desktop right there on your phone. If you want a completely different launcher layout and actual usage methodology, then Block Ratio is arguably one of the most unique launchers on Android wholesale. Ratio basically aims to curb your bad smartphone habits with timers tracking app usage and a monochrome theme with a splash of color thrown in for good measure. It can take a little while to orient yourself, but the entire experience is undoubtedly slick and takes inspiration from a number of places. Ratio 6 is the most recent update and has added lots of features and increased integrations since this was released. I personally love the conversations shelf and this rightmost section is home to almost but not quite all of your messaging apps and is one of the killer features in terms of preventing procrastination on your phone. It basically groups all of your contact chats into an easy to manage place so you don't have to manually open each application that is supported. That includes WhatsApp, Telegram and a few more. This just cleans up the sometimes messy Android messaging experience and Ratio is one of the only actual launchers on Android to offer such 
a feature, which is why it's definitely worth a look. On the opposite side, you'll find the root section, which mim mimics the iOS widget drawer. Originally, you didn't get a wealth of widgets, but blocks information rich uh, monochrome widgets can now be paired with the default Android app widgets. If you do wish, that might break the look of this monochrome theme. A home screen dock is now available too with a persistent search widget for navigating your smartphone. At $50 per year though, or $150 for a lifetime account, this could be a major sore point for some of you out there, as this is easily the most expensive option on our shortlist. However, there is a lot here that you won't get elsewhere, and some may value the experience over other options. You can try to run it for seven days for free to see if it's a good fit for you, and then if you want to pay for it, you can later down the line. At the other end of the spectrum to ratio though, and we thought it was fair to do this, and that premium experience, if you feel like sometimes your phone is getting in the way of your daily life or it inhibits you day to day, then there are a number of limited launchers on Android that you can try out. We think one of the best and still one of the cheapest for the full feature set is less phone. Just like ratio, the idea here is to actively curb or reduce your smartphone usage. It's rudimentary in its execution, but it limits app access to just four apps or on the free tier or eight apps on the $1.39 paid tier. There isn't really much here in terms of functionality and it takes up less than 20 megabytes on your phone. You do get though an inbuilt to do or task list Plus, within app purchases, you can unlock more themes and further app list additions if you wish. If you find yourself spending far too much time on your smartphone, especially during work hours, then less fun could definitely help curb your habits. And it's worth a look, even with that $1.39 asking price for the premium functions. Action Launcher is our final edition, and it's a classic option that sits alongside Nova thanks to its customizability, notoriety, and the update speed. It also helps that it has a huge user base of daily users. Action Launcher comes from the developer Chris Lacey, who also developed and created Action Dash. And this is a digital well-being option that brings those features to any Android phone, no matter the model or software build. If you do have this add-on installed alongside Action Launcher, it will work as a plugin and unlocks extra features that you can utilize like app usage data, focus modes, plus more. One of the killer functions of Action Launcher though is its side panels. So when you're at your home screen, you can swipe left and this will open up a quick list of all of your apps in alphabetical order, allowing you to quick launch and looking similar to Niagara in a lot of ways. If you only have one home screen page, a right swipe also unlocks the widget draw. From here, you can drag and drop widgets and keep them organized in a similar manner to how iOS handles its own widgets in its leftmost drawer. The launcher itself has been developed into a more capable version of the Pixel launcher that goes above and beyond what Launcher has in terms of custom controls and extras. A few iOS features even make the jump across that iPhone and Android divide to join Action Launcher here, including widget stacks, Plus, you can even set custom folder icons or create app drawer folders among a ton of other little tweaks, making it a great option for anyone that just wants a little bit more than what Launcher can potentially offer you. So the wealth of choice afforded by Android means that you don't even need to agree with our shortlist, which has expanded over our last look at the best Android launchers. I want to ask you in that regard, what is your favorite or even go to Android launcher or launchers? If you do happen to use multiple on multiple devices, let us know down in the comment section which you use and why. It's always interesting to hear what you use. But as always, until next time, you'll find those download links down in the description below. This is Damien. Thanks for watching and I will speak to you later.